An event structure is a really powerful structure in LabVIEW, and under structures is event structure. And drag that out. And so an event structure works by, it'll call events based on things that happen uh, typically in the front panel. So like an example is if we take a boolean and we'll just have a OK button and then we'll have a another boolean that is a stop. You can have these controls inside the structure or outside. Um, typically they're on the inside but I mean this is all varies how big the project is. So to add an event, uh, we have this timeout state which is kind of like the default um, state that it has. But if we right click and we go to add event case, this panel pops up. And so what this does is there's uh, you know three I guess windows you can call them, but the only ones that really are important are the event source and the event. So the event source comes from the front panel. So as you can see, we have this OK button, and that is when I the one I added in here. And we have the stop button that's right here. So what we can do is we can cause the event to occur based on what is this switch doing. So like for my stop case, I can say value change, which is you know true false, or we can go down to like are you dragging something over um, like that would be like a mouse click and then you you know click down and then drag over this we have uh, different keystrokes so if the physical key is like down or you know is it down there's all kinds of options for the stop button we're gonna use a mouse and we're gonna say did the mouse go up now I'll show you why in a second so that is this state and then let's add a case for our OK button. And we're just going to keep that a value change. So most of the time, you're going to run across an event structure is held inside of a while loop. This while loop now will only run when the case structure is, is called. And without this while loop, the case structure, you know, when it's in its this state, it's not going to be able to be toggled through switches. It can be if you click on this, this double arrow, this is running continuously. So for this example, we could easily click on this and we could simulate exactly what this is doing. But I mean, typically you're not going to, you're not going to run a program, especially like an executable with this option. So that's where might as well just show you the first time, just put a while loop around it. It's, one of the most common practices for this. So um, I'll create an indicator here just to show how many times the while loop is running. And then obviously we have to attach some sort of button to our while loop. OK, so let's see this thing in action. So if we highlight execution, we hit run. As we can see, the zero is loaded, and then nothing's happening in our code. So let, let's see what happens if we, well, let me go back to the time I'll say. Let me see what happens when we click the OK button, this, this case gets called, the OK case. And then this button also resets. So for the stop button now, remember we put the mouse up. So this is a good example for like a, a cancel button on a lot of applications where if we click, and let's say we don't want to click this button, we hover away and we let go, it did not change. So if we click down and then we click up, then it changes to this mouse up case. So one thing we can do is when we get a bunch of events stacked up, we can right click and go to edit. And then we're brought back to this panel. Using this drop down, we can go between the different events. We can also remove events. So for instance, this boolean switch I created, mouse entering is when the mouse hovers over this area, it'll actually go to this event. But we can also add an event where, uh, excuse me, click on add. 
we can click on the same boolean and we can tell it if the mouse is leaving. If the mouse is leaving or entering, we want this event to run. And we'll click OK. So when we run this code, we can see this using our numeric indicator here on the while loop. When we hover the mouse over, there's a 1. And when we leave, it now becomes a 2. Because that was set to run either the mouse leaving or the mouse entering. So enter out. Same with the OK button. It's set to where we click on that. The loop runs and it'll go to the OK state. And if we click down on this and hold the click but remove, nothing happens. But if we click and then unclick, now our increment loop's showing that the event ran. So here's just another quick little demonstration of this working. So when we click OK, this OK dialog pops up because I added this little VI. And then it just says OK because that was a message going in. And then this string will not be populated until well, I click OK because this, once I click OK, this string is populated with OK. And then let's just hover the mouse over this Boolean. And then we can see mouse was entered. And then let's do the end state. Oh, mouse entered again because I was leaving that state and that so I entered it and I left. So this was actually activated twice. And then end. Then the end state occurs when I lift up the mouse on this end button. And we can stop our while loop to shut everything down. So that was pretty much the basics of how event structure is used. And then just remember it's typically wrapped with a while loop so the events can run uh, seamlessly. Well, thank you and stay tuned for more.